A plant which produces flowers is called an angiosperm. When you look outside your window, most of the plants you see are angiosperms. Flowering plants beat out the gymnosperms to become the most common land plants about 65 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. Of course, there are still plenty of gymnosperms around. Conifers, or cone-bearing plants such as pine trees, are by far the most common type. But there are less than 900 species of gymnosperms on Earth today, and well over 250,000 species of angiosperms. Angiosperms get their name from the Latin words angi, which means enclosed, and sperma, which means seed. All angiosperms have seeds which are enclosed inside a fruit. All of the foods we eat which contain seeds, from apples to zucchini, are actually fruits produced by flowering plants. Making fruits taste good is an ingenious way to get animals to carry the seeds away from the parent plant and deposit them somewhere else. But angiosperms don't grow fruit until their seeds are fertilized and ready to be dispersed. So where do the seeds come from? They come from the flowers. Flowers contain the sexual organs of a plant, and they only open once the plant is ready to reproduce. While flowers come in many shapes, sizes, and colors, they typically share several common features. Although some plants have separate male and female flower types, most angiosperms produce flowers which contain both the male and female organs of the plant. The male part of the flower is called the stamen. It produces the pollen grains, which are the plant equivalent of sperm cells. The stamen consists of a thin, stem-like part called the filament, atop which sits the anther, where the pollen grains emerge from. This tulip flower has nine stamens. The female part of the flower is called the pistil. It typically sits at the center of the flower surrounded by the stamens. The top of the pistil is called the stigma. This is where pollen needs to land in order to fertilize the eggs, which are found at the bottom of the pistil inside the ovary. Once the eggs are fertilized, they will grow into seeds. The ovary will ripen around them, becoming a fruit. Because the ovary of this tulip is found inside the ring of petals, it's called a superior ovary. If the ovary was below the petals, it would be called an inferior ovary. Petals aren't involved in reproduction, and they don't become part of the seed or the fruit. So what is the purpose of the petals? Well, plants need a way to trade genetic information with each other. Since they can't move, they have to rely on an outside force to carry the pollen from one plant to the eggs of another. In some species, pollen grains are blown by the wind, hopefully toward another plant of the same species. Dandelions and maple trees are good examples of wind-pollinated angiosperms. However, most angiosperms use animals, especially insects and birds, to help with pollination. In fact, some scientists believe that the reason angiosperms have become so successful is because of their unique relationship with their pollinators. This is where the flower petals come in. When an animal gets close enough to a flower, pollen, which tends to be sticky, brushes off onto its body, which then rubs off on the next few flowers the animal visits. In this way, pollen from one plant is often able to reach the eggs of another plant. So what does the pollinator get out of this exchange? As with fruit, there is often a sugary prize in it for the animal. Many flowers contain nectar, which insects or birds like to drink. So how does the pollinator know where to find this nectar? Well, the flower's bright colors act like a billboard, advertising that the plant has a sweet reward for visitors. So far, we have seen how angiosperms provide us with fruit and flowers. But what else do angiosperms do for us? Well, the list is almost endless. Life without flowering plants would be pretty empty. Here are just a few examples of the many items we use every day that come from flowering plants. Food, drinks, soaps and perfumes, clothing, furniture, and medicine. And let's not forget about oxygen either. Plants produce the oxygen we need to breathe, and since angiosperms make up about 80% of the plants on Earth, life without them would be pretty impossible. Some of the most wonderful things angiosperms give us are the beautiful flowers themselves. Flowers can be used to convey some pretty important messages to the people we care about the most. 
Flowers are most often used to say, I love you, or I'm sorry, but many flowers actually have specific meanings. Sending pink tulips to someone means you care about them. The only bad thing I can see about flowers is that they don't last forever. But then again, maybe that just makes us appreciate them even more.